Alliums are that fantastic plant that you see at Chelsea Flower Show every year with the purple heads on a long stem, normally about two foot. The one you normally see at Chelsea is actually Purple Sensation, which is a Hollandicum variety. They are a member of the onion family, which also includes chives, wild garlic, leeks, onions, and around about 300 to 900 other species, depending on who's classifying them. They come in a whole range of sizes, so a wild garlic and chives are actually quite small plants, maybe four, eight inches high, and then they go all the way up to a massive six foot with a summer drummer, which is a fantastic allium. They, they typically have a, a long stem, which can be around about, they're normally around about two to four foot high, that's what a lot of the ones that we tend to use are in the garden. Um, and they have normally that big round head and, and that can be in different sizes. It could, it could be quite small, only a couple of inches, but it could go all the way across to, you know, eight to ten inches or even a foot. Um, and the, the shapes, yeah, normally round, but sometimes they can be wedge shapes or they can be open and quite loose. There's a couple like that, which you'll see later on. And they come with a good range of colours. So you've got white flowers. You've got pink, you've got lilac, you've got purple, you've got reds, you've got blue, and you've got yellow, which are slightly rarer. I haven't got all the pictures of these plants, but I can put some links in the description so you can go and see what they're like on Google. We have a catalog which has 30 odd different species of allium, and we have around about 70 varieties. So we've got a good range to play with. Uh, the growing conditions are really quite simple. They're like sun, well-drained soil. They don't really have um, much in the way of pests and diseases, possibly at onion fly, and they may the bulbs may rot if it's too wet. You know, so if you're growing them on clay, you you may want to try putting sand and grit around them or planting them slightly higher. See how you get on with those. But they they prefer sunny, sandy soil. They're a kind of Mediterranean. Asian plants. They can spread a little bit, maybe from self-seeding, but also from dividing from the, the bulblets. The self-seeding doesn't always stay the true variety, but can revert back. They're normally very easy to grow though, you don't really have any problems, don't need staking, don't need to treat them with anything. In fact, the chives are often used to confuse aphids to prevent them from attacking other plants as a planting companion kind of thing on allotments. However, my chives this year got killed by a type of aphid. I don't know what it was, but it's obviously a type of aphid that prefers chives. Um, aphids tend to stick to one plant actually, which is interesting, but some of them have a few different plants that they like to eat on. But other than that, they are really easy to, to look after and you shouldn't have any problems with them at all. The leaves aren't much to talk about, but they do have foliage coming out in the, the winter. Some of the, the summer grown ones, their foliage comes out in December. So you get a little bit of extra uh, foliage in the, in the winter. And then it, they die down after they've flowered. So we normally plant them behind something else so that they the, the foliage doesn't show and they tend you know it's all about the flower head and the spike so you plant them behind something or even through something and they can look really good like that so let's have a look at some varieties we've got summer drummer which is a tall allium which grows up to about six foot tall and it is purple and slightly whitish it's a later one it flowers in june july and yeah it's a really nice plant very uh, impressive uh, seen them planted in a mass in uh, Wisley, and it's fantastic. There is um, other tall alliums in different colours. So we've got Mont Blanc, which is a tall four foot white allium with a quite a small head for its size. It looks quite good. And there's quite a few other similar kind of varieties like Mount Everest, which I don't have a picture for. Then we have things like the Globemaster, which has got a big head on it normally on about four foot stem, four or five foot stem. It's got big head, which is 
eight, ten inches across sometimes. Uh, that's a very impressive purple uh, kind of colour. There's the purple sensation, which is the, the kind of classically well-known, kind of a darker sort of rich purple, sort of two, two and a half foot high stem with a sort of three, three or four foot ball on, on the top. And that's a good one. There is a couple of new ones. So there's Red Mohican and Forelock. I don't have a picture of Forelock, but I have a picture of Red Mohican. That's, uh, that's a really cool plant. I really like it. It's a new one, kind of smallish head. There's a little spiky bit on the top, which looks really cool. Really nice red, uh, quite a tall stem, sort of three, three to four foot. That's a, a lovely variety. Uh, that's an Amethystina species, I, I believe. Then we have, so there's a Christophia, which is a smaller one, which is around about, I think it's 18 inches, and that's got a sort of six inch head on it. And that's got quite an open set of flowers. So it's not so tight, it's kind of, you know, you can see through it a little bit more. You know, it's kind of a nice sort of pinky lilac, metallic-y kind of color. And then one of my favorites is Allium Schubertii, which is, a small allium, it's only about 12 inches high, but the head is about 12 inches wide, and it looks like a firework that's exploded. It's really, really cool. And that's got a nice pinky lilac colour. And there's a, a, a variety which I've discovered in the catalogue, which is a, a white variety called Arctic Snow, which I would like to try. Uh, I think the Schuberti, the, the straight Schuberti, I think one's really, really good. The white might not show up so well in, in some other gardens, but you know, if you want to add a bit of colour, I'd probably go for the Schuberti. So they're lovely, lovely new plants. Uh, there's a metallic shine, which is, which is one which I believe is a Christophii and Atropurpureum cross, about 70 centimetres high. Uh, quite looking forward to, to trying that in a the garden. There's Allium magic, which is a Schubertii and Atropurpureum cross. Has a huge purple red head and it's about 90 centimetres tall. It's a June flowering type. What others have we got that I can show you? So uh, we have senescence. So the senescence is a late variety. That's what senes sene senescence means. It's uh, from the Latin senex, which is like old. It's old, late, July, August flowering. There are a few varieties of those coming out now. So like summer beauty is one, which I don't have a picture for, but there's also millennium which seems to be a more, it's being sold more as a perennial than a, than a bulb I have seen. It's very, very, very clump forming and has lots of flower heads. It's looking like a real um, trooper and I think it's got quite a long flowering period on from what, from what I understand. Another interesting allium is, well, is it an allium? I'm not really sure. It used to be called Nectarioscordum. It's being reclassified as an allium and I don't know, I'm reclassified again, but it's Nectroscordum siculum or uh, allium siculum and it's a tall plant so it's about three or four foot high and it has an open hanging flower shape so the flowers are bigger and they hang down, they droop down and they are greenish white with a like a maroon stripe down the side yeah and three, three to four foot and they grow fairly well in shape so it's one you could try, it, uh, you know, it looks good, quite good with hostas and things like that towering above them. So there's a, there's a fair old mix of uh, alliums that you can choose. I think it's definitely a plant to look into to add some colour in the, the earlier sort of months of like May. They go quite well with um, all sorts of things, to be honest. They go well with practically anything. Such an easy plant to, to pop in in those little gaps and things and, and create some more interest. Other alliums I don't have photos for, which are worthy of a mention, are Spherocephalon, which has really small heads, about maybe an inch and a half across, two inches tall. So they're kind of slightly egg shaped and they have a nice kind of purple colour. They tend to be 60 centimetres high and they're very upright and they. But yeah, they look really good as a as a group and a clump. They're June, July flowering, so they're slightly late later as well. The other alliums which you might want to have a look at are Allium flavum, which is yellow. That's an interesting July, August flowering plant. It's not so big, 30, 40 centimetres high. Allium ceruleum, which is 
blue. That's a you know sky blue kind of colour. It's really nice, and that's about 40, 50 centimetres June, July flowering. There's a strange one called hair, which is it's just I don't know. It looks <laughs> it looks like messy green hair. Um, it's it almost looks like one of those um, round balls where you touch it and the electricity spikes out. Kind of looks like that. It's, it's all over the place, but it's very interesting. Overall, in amongst all those different heights and shapes and colours, there is great variety. So you can get tall and white, small and white, tall and purple, small and purple, and again with different size heads on. The, the growers are doing a fantastic job uh, making new varieties for us. And remember, these are a plant which you can use as a cut flower. So after they, uh, you can either cut them when they're fresh or you can cut them when they've when they've uh, dried out and died. Some people leave the, the dried flower heads in the garden. They can look all right, but it can look a little bit messy because it's an, an earlier flowering plant. It tends to be hanging around with all the things that are in flower. So with most dried head, dried flower seed heads and things like that, they all look good in the autumn, winter, but because it's an early flowering, sometimes it doesn't kind of hold up so well. But you can take those dried seed heads and you can make decorations with them indoors. And what some people do uh, is they spray them silver and gold and then they use them as decorations. And the Schubertii, the dried Schubertii heads are really good for doing that because they're big and really impressive. And you can use them as uh, Christmas decorations. So go and have, explore alliums because they're a fantastic plant for adding, you know, a bit of extra pop, as they say, in May, June, July. And see what fun you can have. And I don't know if you can always send us some photos if you get some really good ones. But my advice is plant them in bulk. You know, lots is the, is the way. So I wouldn't do anything less than 20, to be honest. Unless you've got a very small garden, but you want to be planting them out in, in mass to get real impacts. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you have fun growing your alliums. If you're interested in any varieties, who knows, maybe we'll be able to supply you with some. So please ask and we'll see what we can do. Planting time is typically from around about the end of August to maybe the end of November.